This is ABC 15 Mornings. Spending more at the grocery store. These price pressures are going to remain elevated much longer than they had initially anticipated. More price hikes as the government works to ease inflation. A disaster waiting to happen. One in every 10 cars sold in the United States comes along this track. An in-depth look at why transportation issues need to be dealt with. So you're a renter with repair issues and the landlord isn't taking care of them. I'm investigator Joe Ducey with the steps you need to take to make those repairs happen. All we do is win. Looks for everybody to space out. Takes out his do-it-yourself kit. Raising up. Booker time! Book it! It's another victory this morning for our Phoenix Suns. I mean, we don't want to brag or anything, but I noticed that you are wearing your son's purple. Yeah. Right? We oh, are yeah. bandwagoning, and you know what? That's all right. <laughs> We're just thrilled. Hey, eight in a row sounds team. pretty good to me, right? Exactly. <laughs> and it's an easy team to get rallied behind, that's for sure. Good morning to you on a Thursday. I'm Kaylee O'Kelly. And I'm Nick Saletti. Happy Friday Eve. Let's check in with meteorologist Iris and Rocio right now as we get a quick look at that most accurate forecast. Hey, Iris. And don't leave the house without that heavier coat this morning. It is a colder start to the day. You're going to want to crank up the heat, too, in the car, I promise you, as temperatures are down into the mid 40s now. I told you Phoenix would drop further and we're down to 44 officially here as of the top of the hour and we could still go lower down to about 42 for a low before we start to see that temperature trending up. And here's the deal. While Phoenix is down in the 40s, we've got a lot of spots in the 30s here this morning. We may even see a few outlying freezes in the valley and of course much colder in the high country. So that's why I say grab that heavier coat as you step outside and then get ready to shed layers through the day because by this afternoon a repeat of yesterday's high up to 69 degrees, gorgeous conditions with sunny skies here in the valley. By the time you're heading home, maybe the windows will be down with temperatures cooling into the mid 60s by 6 p.m. and then clear skies and cool temperatures again tonight. Then we've got warmer weather, including 70s in time for the weekend. I'm going to help you plan that weekend with that full forecast still ahead. Megan Thompson, though, helping us plan our morning commute with a look at that morning drive. Oh, the weekend, Iris, it sounds so good. <laughs> so close, but you may have to go through a couple more commutes before we hit the weekend. So Here's what you need to know. We want smooth sailing out there for you as we take you live outside with our ADOT cameras, the I-10 near 32nd Street. Plenty of people out and about at this early hour. I'm sure you're joining them in just a few minutes or so. Here's what you need to know. I-10 eastbound. We do have reports of a stalled vehicle right there near the 60 interchange. I don't see it impacting your traffic flows too much. Here's that desert drive time for you if you're traveling in the eastbound lanes from the split, making your way to the Loop 202 Santan Freeway. That drive time is right around 11 minutes. We do see those speeds though being reduced on the I-10 eastbound just barely as you're approaching the stack and the 17 southbound as you're banking your way past the stack right around 35 miles per hour there. Your drive time on Grand Avenue from the Loop 101 to the 17 is right around 15 minutes. We'll check those other desert drive times near you coming up in just a few minutes. 602, let's get to our top stories right now. It's sentencing day for Daniel and Lacey Rawlings. Back in 2019, the couple drove through floodwaters in Tonto Basin. Their vehicle was swept away and two of their kids as well as their niece were killed. The Rawlings both agreeing to plead guilty to child abuse charges. Lacey will receive four years of probation. Daniel Lowe is facing three counts of manslaughter. He could be sentenced anywhere from probation to decades behind bars. I want to bring you up to story on this. A family headed to the Navajo Nation to spread the ashes of their newborn when someone stole their truck. This whole thing was caught on hotel security cams. This is A.G. Navarro. He turned on his truck so that it could warm up, right? Then he went inside to grab the bags for their family. That is when someone hops in and tries to drive off, but it's stuck in the ice. Navarro rushes out, eventually hops into the bed of the truck. I'm back here. I'm going to ride it out. But as soon as we got close to that highway, all I could think about is my wife and my daughter. Like, if something happened to me, if they roll the truck and I'm in the back, it's not a good situation to be in. So Navajo police telling us they did find the truck. They also tell us they've identified a person of interest in the case. But right now it is not clear if the urn with the baby's ashes was recovered. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's a topic happening around the breakfast table. Everyone's talking about it right now, paying more and getting less. So new this morning, more prices, unfortunately, are going up. Our Amelia Fabiano is live with the latest on the economy and how it's affecting our wallets. So Amelia, walk us through these changes. 
Yeah, so Nick, some of those items on your breakfast table might even be getting some of these price hikes that we could be seeing within the next few months here. The good news is experts do expect inflation to ease up later on this year. But in the meantime, a new Gallup poll is finding that about 80 percent of Americans are really concerned with the rising cost of prices on just about everything right now. And all new this morning. I just alluded to it. A new company is making products a lot of us might use a lot more expensive. Kraft Heinz now adding to the list of things with price tags going up. It will raise prices this spring on everything from cream cheese to hot dogs. Even coffee will cost you more. At the same time, these increases start at the grocery store. The Federal Reserve expects to raise interest rates. The increase will make borrowing money more expensive on everything from mortgages to cars to credit card bills. Rates have been near zero since early in the pandemic, but the growing cost of everything has left a lot of people frustrated. You go to the grocery store and you reach for something and you go, my goodness, this is much more than I used to pay for. Typical American family is spending about $250 a month more uh, to buy the same amount of things that they were buying uh, a year ago. Yeah, that's a lot of extra money for a lot of people to have to find every month, right? So to protect the economy from the pandemic, the Fed slashed interest rates to near zero in March 2020. And interest rates are still at historically low levels right now. But Nick, experts do expect there to be about five interest rate hikes at some point this year throughout the year. Back to you. Yeah, a lot of money news there coming out of the Capitol. Amelia Fabiano, thank you for breaking down what it means at the dinner table as well. well. The cost of rent also continuing to rise across the U.S. According to the latest Realtor.com monthly rental report, prices rose five times faster last year than they did in 2020. The Phoenix metro area making the top 10 for year-to-year -year growth in December with rent increasing, get this, more than 26 percent. The average now, $1,800 a month. My goodness. Well, from flooded apartments to past problems, our Let Joe Know team is hearing countless issues that renters are dealing with valley-wide. So all new for you this morning, Joe Ducey looks at your rights under Arizona law and the steps you can take to get repairs taken care of. Certainly more evictions, more difficulty um, paying rents. Stephanie Nader has heard a lot from renters needing help knowing their rights, landlords protecting their investments. People are struggling out there. They're having a hard time. Nader supervises the landlord tenant program for the city of Phoenix. It's a free service open to anyone across the state and there are no income requirements. We talk to not just tenants, but landlords. Um, when they're running into difficulties or they have any questions about what their rights and responsibilities are. Nader says while her staff can't provide legal advice, they can connect people to rental and legal assistance, programs like community legal services. If it's a repair issue, they can walk you through the steps to take outlined by Arizona's Residential Landlord Tenant Act. One renter wrote us saying his apartment flooded several times this past weekend. No maintenance crews came out and no repairs have been made. What they, the landlord tenant counselor would do would tell him, okay, what is the process for requesting repairs? And then also if those repairs aren't done, what they can do in order to either break the lease or do the repairs themselves. Arizona law states if an issue is affecting health and safety, a tenant can deliver a written notice to the landlord. It needs to outline the repairs needed to be made. If they're not complete within five days, the renter could terminate the lease. Or in a case of inaction by a landlord, renters could take things into their own hands and go through a process trying to deduct it from the rent at a later time. Always pay your rent, but then we can move forward in getting those repairs done. They are not one in the same, and, and you can't withhold rent um, in order to get your repairs done. Best advice, Nader says, when you're in doubt, reach out for advice. Go to abc15.com slash let Joe know for links to the landlord tenant program and sample letters for requesting repairs. I'm investigator Joe Ducey. If you got a problem, let me know. Well, make it eight wins in a row for our Phoenix Suns. Devin Booker dropped in 43 points last night as his team won against Utah. The Suns are now back home. They'll be hosting Minnesota tomorrow night. Then two weeks from today, the NBA trading deadline. There are plenty of rumors, too, that the team could be aggressive and make some moves. We'll just have to wait and see. It's almost 6.09 and up next here on ABC 15 Mornings. More money, more brain power? We have the results of a new study involving the cognitive skills of babies. Plus, slapping some chicken nuggets, a burger patty, and some hash browns all into a single bun. If you're not sure what to get the next time you're at McDonald's, the fast food giant's about to roll out a list of some 
tasty menu hacks. I'm Joe St. George in Del Mar, California. You may not think these railroad tracks impact you, but they do. We explain why this eroding cliff is to blame, how it may impact the economy, and why fixing infrastructure is still complicated in our country. It's all past the hour. Let's get to our morning headlines. Today marks the first deadline for healthcare workers who fall under the federal vaccine mandate. This is for facilities that participate in Medicare and Medicaid. Healthcare workers in about 25 states have to get their first shot by today. The other states, which include Arizona, filed legal challenges, so the first dose requirement is not until next month. The number of colon cancer cases is rising among young people. Now doctors are urging them to get screenings earlier. A new study found patients 20 to 29 had the highest increase in rates of new cases, and those cases are also more likely to be in advanced stages when diagnosed. Today, President Joe Biden will hold an event at the White House to announce the retirement of Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer. He was appointed to the bench in 1994. His retirement gives the president a chance to name and confirm a replacement before the midterms. No more Wordle spoilers on Twitter. The site suspending an account that would respond to people who post their Wordle scores by telling them the answers. Wordle gives players six tries to figure out the five letter word of the day. Well, we're working to make sense of this new bipartisan infrastructure law, which promises to fix a lot of the nation's transportation issues from mass transit to highways, even bridges right here in Arizona. But as our Joe St. George shows us, this bill passed by Congress doesn't guarantee that federal money will come. At first glance, these may be some of the most picturesque train tracks in the entire country. And you may also think the trains that run here have no impact on your life. One in every 10 cars sold in the United States comes along this track. Well, Sharon Humphreys is here to tell you why you're wrong. She's a civil engineer in San Diego County, California, and says when she looks at these tracks, she doesn't see the beautiful Pacific Ocean. She sees a disaster waiting to happen. The ocean, the wave action, the rain is eroding the cliffs next to the track. Humphreys estimates the cliff is losing about one to two feet a year, and while they're currently stabilized and safe, the inevitable will happen. So we're going to be moving these tracks off of the bluff. You might think it's easy for local governments to just move these tracks. After all, these cliffs are posing a risk. And Congress did pass an infrastructure law, right? Well, not so fast. Yeah, it's going to cost a lot of money. Hassan Igrada is the CEO of SANDAG, a government organization that oversees transportation projects in this part of the country. He says it will cost billions to create a new tunnel and move the tracks inland. And while the new infrastructure law will likely provide some funding in order to get the money, his region will need to come up with some of the cash, too. I have not heard of one single project that was fully funded by the federal government. So what does that mean? It means local and state governments around the U.S. will need to use their own money, too, to get big infrastructure projects done. And if leaders don't have it, new elections or political debates will need to take place to increase things like sales taxes. We're going to the voters. If they say nay, none of this will happen. Everywhere in the country, though, there are critics of tax hikes. The voters have been deceived. Carl DeMeo with Reform California is the local critic here. He says voters nationwide aren't just going to give their local leaders a blank check without explaining where past tax hikes have gone. Transparency is needed. Hassan says big projects are needed. In Del Mar, California, I'm Joe St. George. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time. Sponsored by Accident Law Group. Good morning. Happy Thursday to you. I'm Megan Thompson taking a look at those current traffic conditions. Two things to give you a heads up on pretty close to one another. The I-10 eastbound, we still have reports of a stalled vehicle right near the US-60 interchange. Your traffic flows right there. They do look okay. It's just the warning for you this morning before you leave. I-10 westbound reports of an accident at Van Buren Street. I'm also looking at those traffic flows and they do appear to be good. As we move over to the stack, the I-10 eastbound and the I 17 southbound seems just a little bit of slowing as we look to that time of the morning. So if on the I 17 southbound from the stack to the split, your speed dropping just below 60 miles per hour. Nothing too severe. Your drive time is right around six minutes. And as you're approaching the stack on the I 10 eastbound, your speeds will drop to about 32 miles per hour near spots like 43rd Avenue. But as you're making your way from the West Valley, passing the loop 101, you have nice green conditions for you. The North stack checking in nicely with green conditions on the 17, the 101 and the 51. 
and the East Valley looking great. The 60 giving us green conditions to start your Thursday morning. So here are those desert drive times on the I 10 eastbound from the loop 303 to the mini stack. We are starting to tick upward just a little bit to 22 minutes right now. I 17 southbound from the 101 to the stack is 12 minutes and 13 minutes on the 51 southbound from the loop 101 to the mini stack. Now let's go check out that most accurate forecast with meteorologist Iris Emerson. You know, Megan, as those desert drive times start to climb, our temperatures are actually falling and that tends to happen every single day as we bottom out right around sunrise when it comes to our low temperatures. And this morning, those temperatures keep falling into the 30s in even more neighborhoods here as we start the day. So let's start in the East Valley. Apache Junction, you're down to 37 degrees. Chandler, you've dropped all the way to 36. Queen Creek and the Santan Valley, you're both right there too at 36 degrees. It's 38 in Gilbert. Good morning in Maricopa. You're down to 36. And check out those West Valley temperatures. Peoria, Levine, both in the upper 30s. Levine at 37. Peoria at 39. Goodyear, you're right there too. It's 38 in Buckeye and 39 in Wickenburg. So it is a colder start across the valley and much colder up north as we wake up to temperatures down into the teens this morning. So while I keep saying you'll need a coat here in the valley, you're going to need a heavy coat and maybe some extra layers in the high country, a hat, a scarf. That's for sure as our temperature is down to just 10 degrees in Flagstaff and in Window Rock. Now, despite the cold start, today's temperatures will end up back near normal with highs in the upper 60s here in Phoenix, 69 for Phoenix Sky Harbor and 40s for spots like Flagstaff, Winslow and Window Rock, mid 50s in Sedona. Our 30 year average 69. That was yesterday's high temperature. That's where we'll end up today in Phoenix and Tempe reaches 68, 67 for Cave Creek and 69 today in Surprise. So here's how we warm up. We'll start off cold and we'll hold on to those 40s in Phoenix through at least 9 o'clock this morning. Then the 50s set in 50s through lunchtime before we climb into the 60s. Our high today peaks at 68 degrees. Winds through the day today in the valley looking light, but we're going to see some wind issues in other parts of our state right now. Breezy in Bullhead City and in Sedona and once again today, the upper Colorado River Valley under a lake wind advisory this afternoon and evening gusts as high as 45 miles an hour there. But look at this. We've got new wind advisories along the muggy on rim, including for spots like Flagstaff. Those go into effect tonight at 6 p.m. and remain in effect overnight. So essentially winds are going to start coming in out of the no east and northeast, and that's going to mean that areas west and southwest of the San Francisco peaks. Mount Eldon will experience very strong wind gusts. We're talking gusts as high as 40 to 50 miles an hour in some spots, but we could see some isolated 70 mile an hour winds. And so some areas of concern listed right there. Damaging winds will be possible overnight tonight. Make sure you're securing anything that's loose in the area as those winds will again pick up overnight. For the valley, we'll get some breezes, but those winds pick up tomorrow and our gusts nowhere near as strong, but we will get some gusts that are near 25 to 30 miles an hour by tomorrow. We also have a warm up coming our way today. 69 70 starting tomorrow. Then a few more storm systems to track this weekend and next week. I'm going to show you the changes coming with those in that super seven day in the next half hour. Well, this is a really interesting story at 620 financial security and child development. Does it matter when it comes to brain power for babies? The baby's first year study followed low income moms shortly after their babies were born. Now, some were given $300 extra a month. The rest $20. And after a year, researchers found the babies born to families getting more money showed stronger cognitive development. Generally, we can think about how cash might help stabilize or support children in their home environments and things like paying bills to keep the lights on or buying uh, cleaning products. But we can also look to see how um, cash may be used for child specific items like diapers or car seats or a crib. Or maybe just the family's happier, right? Because they have a little more money to spend. The study will continue as well. They're going to look at how families are using the cash. And researchers will also be checking development again among these babies this summer around their fourth birthdays. Attention all dog owners coming up at 625. The perfect event to have some fun with your furry friends while contributing to a great cause. If something seems too good to be true or something seems just like so enraging or evokes this emotion that feels really unreasonable for whatever reason, it probably is not true. Then learning more through education to separate fact from fiction online. At 637, the tools you can use right now to find the truth. And the U.S. sending a letter to Moscow at 644. What was in it and what could happen next with the growing tensions in Russia? 
625, the largest adopt-a-thon and pet celebration in the West is coming to the Valley. It's on your bulletin board this morning. You and your four-legged friends are welcome at the 6th Annual Doggy Street Festival. This is happening at Steel Indian School Park Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can check out all kinds of pet products and services, hear tips from veterinarians and win prizes. There's also an area with activities for kids, live music and food, and of course, Plenty of animals up for adoption from local rescues. Admission is free. Find a new furry family member or maybe spoil the one you already got. That's on today's bulletin board. By the way, if you take the kids, you better plan to adopt an animal. Otherwise, it's going to be a rough day for you. No pun intended, or maybe it was. 625, McDonald's is adding some new options to its menu for a limited time only. These are inspired by you, the customers. Starting Monday, you can order four menu hacks, and they include the hash brown McMuffin, that sounds delicious, the crunchy double, land, air, and sea, and the surf and turf. Now, these ingredients are sold separately. You have to assemble them yourself on the app. Every time I come to get a haircut, you know, my wife's like, what took so long? I'm like, oh, you know, they just do a good job and they're thorough. But reality is I'm talking to the people, man. And, you know, we're we're sharing stories about when we were enlisted and being away from our families. A barbershop in Chandler offering a safe space for veterans. The spot is owned and run by former service members who wanted to offer more than just great haircuts to people adjusting to civilian life. We're all in here together. We all feel like we're almost back in the military. The way we talk, the way we analyze things, it just makes things really comfortable for us. The spot, by the way, is getting ready to mark two years in business. Up next at 630, who wants a three-day weekend? Can we hear a collective, I do? Well, what about every weekend? A bill is now being written to get you to work less. And let the price increases continue, unfortunately. You may need to start working some overtime to afford that grocery bill. We'll tell you what items are about to cost even more. Stealth Omicron, what exactly is it? And is there reason to be concerned? We're hearing from our ABC 15 Health Insider. Well, temperatures are going to start to climb as we head into the weekend, peaking at about 72 degrees on Saturday. But then I'm tracking another storm that's look, looking to bring a big cool down our way. I'm going to show it to you in that super seven day forecast.